I know, in general, what the economics of, say, Wrigley chewing gum will look like 10 years from now. The Internet isn't going to change the way people chew gum. It isn't going to change which gum they chew. You know, if you own the chewing gum market in a big way, and you've got double mint and spearmint and juicy fruit, those brands will be there 10 years from now. So I can't pinpoint exactly what the numbers are going to look like on Wrigley, but I'm not going to be way off if I try to look forward on something like that. That evaluating that company is within what I call my circle of competence. I understand what they do. I understand the economics of it. I understand the competitive aspects of the business. There can be all kinds of companies that have wonderful futures, but I don't know which ones they are. I mean, this video is for educational purposes only. It should not be considered investment, legal, or tax advice. It is not an offer to buy or sell any security. Past performance does not indicate future results. Investing is risky. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it's uh, snowing or sleeting, and it's April. So yeah, if you want to enjoy some nice uh, warm weather, you should definitely not move to Indianapolis because it's it's like 32 degrees in April, and uh, that's all right. We're uh, we're having fun doing some vlogging for the first time ever on this channel. So I decided that uh, since I'm basically unable to produce content on a regular basis while raising three children and working a full-time job and keeping up with uh, any sort of fitness that I should probably walk more. And since I need to walk more anyways, might as well uh, make some YouTube videos for you fine folks while I'm at it. So here we are. Yeah, it's definitely sleeting. Is this hail? I'm pretty sure it's like hailing. I don't know if you guys can even see that. Man, it's wild. I'm uh, really hoping this camera is waterproof or sleet proof or hail proof. Anyways, one of the most important concepts that Warren Buffett talks about is something called circle of competence. And what he means by that is simply buy stocks or investments in general that you understand. So that, that may not even be a stock. It may just be any investment. Like maybe you're someone that knows a lot about real estate, rental properties, starting businesses, selling things, you know, whatever it is that you know a lot about. That's something that you would consider in your circle of competence. And since buying a stock is no different than buying a company, buying a stock that's within your circle of competence means buying a business that is within your level of understanding. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and he gave me a list of 20 different stocks and he asked me what I thought. He wanted to buy $1,000 worth of each of those businesses. And I asked him, you know, some of them were, you know, Apple, Tesla, I uh, forget some of the other ones, but you know, those, those made sense. I asked him, well, how'd you come up with some of these other ones, and he said, I don't know. A friend of his, I guess, told him that they were good investments, and I asked him if he had any idea what the business did, and he had no idea. The point is, there's just no way that you can make money consistently buying businesses that you have no idea what they do. I mean, you are essentially, at that point, just gambling. I'm not sure what it is about investing that people think in order to make money in the market, they've got to go out and buy the next Amazon or invest in these businesses that have these fancy sounding business models, or in most cases, you know, they've gone up a lot over the last couple of years or whatever. Maybe their friends are talking about them or they read about them online or saw something on TV. I almost died there. Hey, gonna walk in the middle of the street and die filming a YouTube video. Anyways, People feel like they need to buy these exotic, complicated sounding business models. And the reality is that's just not the case. You can make a lot of money. In fact, I think you can make more money buying simple businesses that do extremely ordinary, boring, everyday things that most importantly, you know something about them. And there's a couple of reasons for that. But most importantly, if you buy businesses that you do not understand, you are not gonna be able to stick with them whenever times get tough, and times will definitely get tough. No matter how great a business is, no matter how great a stock's history has been, every single company has gone through times 
where their stock has been down 50% or more. You can look at even Berkshire Hathaway, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, look at all those stocks and you'll see multiple occasions where the stock was down 50% or more. I think Netflix a couple times was down 80% or more. So if you buy a business, a stock, on the advice of a friend or whatever, and you don't know what they do, and the stock is down 50%, 80%, what are you going to do? You're gonna sell it, there's no way. Even if you called the next Amazon or your friend was right and this is the next Amazon or Apple or whatever, even if it is the next great business and you can't hold on long enough to realize the gains, there is no point in investing in it at all. You have to have the fortitude to stick with it in the tough times and you're not gonna have that fortitude unless you understand the business. So always, always, always invest in things that you understand. Buffett gives this great analogy of Ted Williams. Ted Williams batted 400 over his career in baseball. If you're not familiar with baseball, that is an extremely impressive average. Most batters fail to get on base even that much, including walks. So it's very impressive to bat that high, 400. But Ted Williams was so successful because he broke his own strike zone into 74 different parts. And what he did was he said, look, if I swing at balls that are pitched roughly in the middle to inside of the plate, I hit them 40% of the time I'll get on base. If I swing at balls that are outside and low, I'm gonna get on base about 25% of the time. So instead of just only swinging at strikes, what he did was he just waited until the pitcher threw him a pitch that was in his strike zone, in his like high probability area. And even if it was a strike, if it wasn't something that he liked, he didn't swing. Investing is the exact same way. There are thousands of businesses that you can choose from. You don't really need to get that many right in order to have investment success. You don't have to buy exotic businesses. You can make a lot of money buying things that you know and you have experience with. And to prove that, I made a list of 50 different businesses that I personally do the most business with. So these are businesses that I either own a lot of their products in my house or I shop a lot at in their store or maybe I subscribe to a service that they provide, something like that. So how would I have done had I just bought $1,000 worth of each one of these businesses. The worst performing of the list was Gap. My wife does a lot of shopping at Old Navy, which is owned by Gap. Over the last five years, it's the only stock in this portfolio, this hypothetical portfolio, that would have lost money. $1,000 shrunk to 690. Number 49, Disney. We have not gone to Disney World yet. We do have three kids, so I'm sure at some point we will. We subscribe to Disney Plus, so a $1,000 investment in Disney would have grown to 1,217 over the last five years. That is kind of surprising to see Disney as the second worst performing business. Number 48, we fill up at ExxonMobil occasionally. $1,000 five years ago is now worth 1,231. And again, these, and these are dividends reinvested. The chart, the price chart is simply price only. So there is a small discrepancy there. Number 47, Clorox wipes, bleach. I'm sure everyone has something like this made by Clorox in their house. A $1,000 investment five years ago is worth $1,242 today. Our cell phone plan at, at home, my wife's plan, and through work is from Verizon. With dividends reinvested, a $1,000 investment in Verizon five years ago is now worth $1,334. At number 45, we do our Pharmacy through CVS, $1,000 five years ago is now worth $1,475 today. Number 44, I go to Starbucks, a pretty regular amount. I probably shouldn't, but I enjoy getting coffee there and doing work periodically. So $1,000 in Starbucks five years ago is worth $1,564. Number 43, Johnson & Johnson, they make all kinds of consumer products, pharmaceuticals. I'm sure everyone has some Johnson & Johnson products 
in their house. $1,000 now worth 1,600. And at number 42, eBay. I buy and sell things on eBay all the time. I have had, had an account since like 2006 or something. So eBay is now $1,000 now worth 1,667. Number 41, TJ Maxx. We shop at TJ Maxx, Home Goods, quite a bit. $1,000 invested five years ago is now 1,707. Number 40, Kohl's. The price has gone basically nowhere, but the big dividend yield reinvested has grown $1,000 to 1,709. 39, we do our banking with JP Morgan Chase. They make a lot of money on the money that we're letting them use and paying us basically nothing for. $1,000 five years ago, now worth 1,709. Number 38, Chevron. Again, filling up at Chevron. Now worth 1,759 with dividends reinvested. Almost all of that's come in the last six months. News Corp, they own the Wall Street Journal, which I subscribe to. $1,000, now worth 1,783. Number 36, Toyota. We have a Toyota Sienna in the garage for our family, and I drive a Toyota Prius. Actually, I should say I, it mostly just sits in the driveway. I don't really drive anymore other than the van. But anyways, we have two Toyota vehicles. $1,000 five years ago, now worth $1,797. Number 35, Pfizer. Guess we don't technically buy anything from Pfizer, but we did get the COVID vaccine, so I put them on a list. $1,000 worth $1,868. At number 34, Procter & Gamble. I'm sure we have a ton of products in our house, and you do too that are manufactured by Procter & Gamble, including Gillette razors, which I uh, use a lot. I don't like any other razors. I've basically tried them all. $1,000 worth almost double, $1,951. Number 33, we do all of our shipping through UPS. There's a UPS store right down the road. $1,000 now worth 2022 Number 32, dollar store, we do Buy things at the dollar store periodically. $1,000 now worth $2,044. Charles Schwab at number 31. The company I work for uses TD Ameritrade as our primary custodian, which was purchased by Charles Schwab. So this is a little bit inaccurate, but I put them on there anyways. This isn't a perfect list. $1,000 now worth $2,081. Number 30, Berkshire Hathaway. We have Geico as our primary insurance. Uh, we also like to get some ice cream at Dairy Queen, like, I don't know, once every couple of years or so. Anyways, uh, that's owned by Berkshire Hathaway as well. $1,000 now worth $2,085. Kroger, we do most of our grocery shopping at Aldi and Costco, but we also shop at Kroger sometimes. So $1,000 now worth $2,107. Number 28, BlackRock. There are several BlackRock ETFs that I'm familiar with from work and that I invest in personally. So $1,000 worth of BlackRock is now worth $21.18. Best Buy, if I need any electronics, I usually pick them up at Best Buy. They match any other pricing and I like to be able to see it in the store sometimes. So anyways, $1,000 in Best Buy is now, is now worth $21.31. We don't eat at McDonald's a ton, but we do every now and again and we were on a trip or something. $1,000 now worth $21.38. 25, Church & Dwight, another household products company. I'll let you uh, look up the list for yourself, the kinds of brands that Church & Dwight owns, but $1,000 invested, now worth $21.79. 24, Home Depot, my personal favorite, one of my favorite retailers. Basically do all of our home improvement shopping at Home Depot. $1,000 is now worth $21.79. Walmart at number 23, it grew $1,000 to $22.94. Ally Financial, we do our online savings account through their high yield savings product. They also have no fees on checking and savings. My favorite bank account, $1,000 invested five years ago is now worth $2,335. Waste management for trash pickup, landfill, it's a pretty boring business, but surprisingly done very well. $1,000 five years ago, now worth $23.78. Nike shoes, Nike apparel, etc. $1,000 now worth $24.34. We have an American Express card, so put them on the list. Get 6% back on groceries. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out that card. We love it. $1,000 in Amex 
five years ago is now worth $24.49. We also have a Visa card through Costco. You'll see them on the list in a minute. $1,000 in Visa grew to $24.97. Lowe's, if we can't find it at Home Depot or we need it closer by, we'll go Lowe's. $1,000 grew to $25.99. PayPal, do a lot of business with PayPal via eBay and also transferring money to and from friends and family. $1,000 in PayPal is now worth $26.26. After getting absolutely obliterated over the last uh, six months, it still has done quite well. Number 15 is AutoZone. Anytime we need uh, auto parts and we need them fast, which you pretty much always do when you need auto parts, we get them at AutoZone. $1,000 is worth $3,000. $77. Sony. I film on a Sony a7S III camera. It was ridiculously expensive, like very expensive. You can look it up if you're curious. So yeah, support my channel so I can help pay off my Sony a7S III camera. $1,000 has tripled to $3,106. We have a MasterCard debit card through Ally. $1,000 in MasterCard has grown to $3,177. Anthem is through our, our health insurance is through Anthem. $1,000 in Anthem grew to 3202. S&P Global, they own the S&P 500 index, a bunch of other indices. And then we have a back testing product through them that I use at work all the time. So that's why this one makes the list for me. $1,000 grew to 3283. Google, obviously YouTube, you're watching this on uh, Google's YouTube. We also use YouTube TV whenever it's March Madness or NFL season. $1,000 in Alphabet grew to $3,309. Apparently our family loves burritos because Chipotle makes our list of uh, top purchases. $1,000 in Chipotle five years ago is now worth $34.52. I do video editing now through Premiere Pro and I also do photos in Lightroom. Subscribe to their creative suite. Stock's done pretty well up until recently. $1,000 grew to $34.76. Number seven, we all probably have this on our circle of competence list, but Amazon, $1,000 grew to $35.27 over the last five years. Number six, one of my very favorite businesses, Costco, $1,000 grew to $37.39. Speaking of Costco, I have to show off my uh, Kirkland Signature sweatshirt. Super soft. Apparently, they're very hard to find. I had a Costco employee stop me a couple weeks ago and ask me how I got a hold of this shirt. They thought I worked at Costco. And they said it's almost impossible to find these sweatshirts, apparently. So I just found them one day and I, I got it kind of as a joke because I love Costco so much. But anyways, Costco, number six, $1,000 nearly quadrupled to 37.39. Number five, we use Mint and TurboTax to do our taxes, which I still need to do. Uh, procrastinating on that. $1,000 grew to 42.59. Number four, Target. I can't say I shop much at Target, but my wife really loves it, especially for some of their kids' brands. So we spend a good amount of money at Target. $1,000 invested five years ago is now worth $45.31. Microsoft, obviously with Windows. I don't personally use Windows, but I do use Microsoft Office, which I'm using uh, my phone actually to record this PowerPoint presentation. We'll see how it goes. I don't, I don't even know if it'll work out well, but anyways, Microsoft for work and for this channel. Number two, Apple. I'm a huge fan of Apple products, specifically the MacBook, but you know, we pretty much all, most of us anyways, have iPhones, if you're in the United States anyways. iPads, iCloud, all that Apple provides. And then the number one best performing stock in the list of businesses that I personally do a lot of business with is Block, Square. Uh, my, mostly, primarily this occurs through the Cash app, which Square, now Block, owns. And I do a lot of like Facebook marketplace deals or whatever and transfer money via the cash app. So that stock has been the best performer uh, until recently. It's been pretty bad recently, but over the last five years, it would have grown $1,000 to 
7,546. So how would all 50 of these businesses have done? What would my total return be if I just bought a portfolio of 50 stocks that I knew pretty well and had a lot of experience with and just did absolutely nothing for five years? That portfolio would have grown by 153% compared with 108% for the S&P 500. And that wasn't even me doing any kind of analysis. It was just simply, what are the businesses that I use the most in my everyday life? If you have Mint, get on there and see which kind of businesses you have done the most amount of shopping with or whatever. Or just simply get out a piece of paper, make a list of every company that you have experience with. It's probably gonna be different than mine. If you're like a pharmacist or something, you're probably gonna have a lot of experience with healthcare companies that I personally don't. They're not in my circle of competence, whereas you may not have S&P Global on your list if you don't use that at your work. So it's every list is gonna be different, but make a list of 50 businesses that you do the most amount of, of shopping with and then check the five-year performance. You can get on Morningstar and you can look up the five-year trailing performance and just see what would have happened if you had bought an equal amount of each one of those businesses five years ago and then just held it and done nothing. Let me know in the comments. If you do that, let me know in the comments what businesses you had that were different than mine. Let me know how your portfolio would have done. And in the future, before you make an investment, even if it's an ETF or, or a stock, whatever it is, challenge yourself. Do you have either personal direct experience working with this business yourself or at work? Or at minimum, is this, is this a business that you could explain to like a, maybe a senior in high school or something? Could you explain this business to a senior in high school and they understand it? Could it be simple enough uh, for them to understand your explanation. And if the answer is no, if you have trouble writing down a couple sentences about what the business does, like you honestly have no business buying it in the first place, you're not gonna be able to stick with it over time. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks for bearing with me as I walk around the snowy neighborhood this morning. Hope you all have a great uh, weekend and I will see you in the next video.